Hi guys. I hope you're staying safe today and everybody's pretty dry. Um, I wanted to run through what you had done for section two and make sure that everybody understood it before we moved on and explained what you should be working on today. So for section two, you had to read about an introduction to mapping. And what we're going to be doing in chapter one is talking about using maps and what you can learn from looking at maps and how maps are used. And today, um, you may not use paper maps, uh, but you're using your maps on your phone. Your parents probably have GPSs that they use on their phone or on their um, cars. And you would still, this would still be important even as mapping turns more technological. So first I wanted to go over these four geoterms. And you already know what absolute location is, and you also know what relative location is. I just want to make sure you understand that for absolute location, absolute location is explained by giving, sorry, that's Olivia. Absolute location is explained by giving the coordinates of a place. So in your movies when you were telling me 20 degrees north, 40 degrees west, those are the coordinates and they're expressed like this. 20 and then the degree sign north comma 40 degrees west. So it looks like that in parentheses. So that's the absolute location of a place. It's given in using coordinates. Um, relative location, you know, is where something is located in relation to another place. Distortion and map projection were the new ones for you. And distortion is something you should definitely understand. The world is round, as you know, and we look at flat maps. And it's important for us to understand that flat maps can't really tell us everything about the round world because you can't make something round look flat and keep everything the same. So they have to distort things. Like you see in this picture of this guy's face, when they flatten out, if this were a round ball of his face, when they flatten it out, his neck gets bigger and then his hair gets bigger. And that's the same thing that's happening here. When you flatten out this map, you see Canada and Greenland get huge. If you've ever seen Greenland on a map, it looks like it's the same size of the United States and it's nowhere near that big. That's distortion. And then if you go back, the last one is map projection, and map projection are just different types of maps that show distortion in different ways. And I'll give you some examples of that next week. So those are the definitions. Um, you were supposed to create symbols or simple illustrations, and I'll just check those. Um, but let me know if you have any questions about that section, and I'll just move on. So what I'm going to ask you to do, since we don't have class today, is move into section three and read section three. So I'm going to give you a second, pause the video, go read section three. All right, so hopefully you read section three, and now you need to do the, the um, assignment down at the bottom. So what this is going to ask you to do is going to refer to the map. It says in your student text, which is right above. So when it says refer in your student text, it's just saying refer to the map right above. And you're going to follow the directions. Write the map's title at the northwest corner of the map. So you find the northwest corner of this map, which is here, and you're going to write, write the title. But how do you know what the title is? This is where you scroll up and you look at this map. So you find on this map that the title is Marshall Gold Discovery State Historic Park. So then you'll scroll back down, and on this map, you'll create a text box, and you'll write Marshall... I'm not going to... I'm not going to write it all out, but once you're done typing, you click away and you drag your writing over to where you want it to go. And then you save your answer. And mine's not going to let me save because I'm on the teacher subscription and we're not allowed to save our answers. So you're going to finish all through this. And this is just teaching you to understand a map grid. So if you're looking for something in B5, that's row B, column 5, and that's right here, so something in this area. So when it's F1 and G6, you're looking at the rows and you're looking at the columns. So go ahead and do section three, um, and then move on to the next section of the video. Okay, so at this point, I'm hoping that you've done section three, and now you're moving into section four. So section four is gonna take the map grid that you were looking at before, and it's gonna apply it to the global grid. This should be sort of familiar to you because you uh, told me the coordinates of the cities that you visited. 
And I want to go over a couple things before you do these reading notes. We're going to be looking at parallels of latitude and meridians of longitude. It's latitude and longitude lines that we use to find the coordinates of cities. So if you click on certain pictures in the book, they get bigger. And these are latitude lines. I'm in Google Chrome. That's why when I scrolled over this, the mirror uh, magnifying glass appeared. Um, but if you look, the equator in the middle is the main line of latitude. Then as you go north, it's measured in degrees. So think of these like inches, 15 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, so on and so forth. So, like you see over on the right side, latitude is measured from the equator, north and south of the equator. You want to know the, the terms parallels of latitude, and you want to know that the equator is located at zero degrees. Then, we move on to the meridians of longitude. And you're also going to want to know that term, because we have the prime meridian. And the prime meridian goes over West Africa and up into Western Europe. We measure west and east of the prime meridian. So as you see to the right side of this image, longitude is measured from the prime meridian. So you put it together, and when you tell me the coordinates of an absolute location, you're telling me how far north of the equator a city is located and how far east or west of the prime meridian something is located. So hopefully that is clear. Um, all of these blue words are important for you to know. So if you wanted to take notes in a Google Doc, or if you wanted to write these down on paper, um, however you would like to do it, the other option is I'll, something I'll show you in class. So now we're going to take what we just learned about latitude and longitude, and we're going to apply it to cities around the world. So you're going to click on this cities around the world map, and you're going to be able to see up at the top, are the um, meridians of longitude. So here's the prime meridian, goes up and down, and then measuring west of the prime meridian or east of the prime meridian. Same thing, here in the middle, you have the equator, and then you have lines going north and south of the equator. So we're gonna pick a couple of cities, and we're gonna do follow the instructions. So over here, follow along with me. Latitude and longitude mark the absolute location of cities. The coordinates of Rio de Janeiro, where the Olympics just were, are 23 degrees south, so that means that it's south of the equator, and 43 degrees west. So pause the video and use those coordinates to find where Rio de Janeiro is. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna find the equator. So the equator is right here. And then you're going to look at the line. So there's zero degrees. And now you need to go 23 degrees south. So there's a line that's just very close to 23 degrees south. It's 23 and a half degrees south. So we'll just use that for reference. So it's going to be on this dotted line. And then you're going to do 43 degrees west. So you're going to go up to the prime meridian. And you're going to find, okay, 45 degrees west is close. So you'll follow that line down until you get to the dotted line. And look, there's Rio de Janeiro. So you can do this by moving your finger or your mouse along the lines until you come to the prime meridian to go east or west, the equator to go north or south. So what you have now are coordinates. So Rio de Janeiro's coordinates, as you just saw, were 23 degrees south, 43 degrees west. So what I want you to do is follow the instructions below. You're going to need to refer to this map again. You can open them in different tabs if you want, so that you can just click back and forth, whatever is easiest for you. So what is the name of the parallel at zero degrees latitude? You need to scroll up and think, what, okay, zero degrees latitude, that's going to be going this way, and zero degrees, oh, that's the equator. So then you'll write right here, equator. And again, I'm signed in as a teacher, so it won't let me save my answers. <laughs> so then you'll keep going all the way down until you get to the bottom. And these are where you're going to start naming cities. So what city is located at 47 degrees north, so on and so forth, until you get to the bottom two. And these are the hardest two questions, but I think you can do them. So give it a shot, and we'll go over it in class next time I see you uh, to make sure you really understand it. So go ahead and do section four, stop the video, and then come back to move on to section five.
All right, we're on section five now. So this one's going to talk about um, dealing with distances on a map. So obviously maps don't show the exact distance between two places because then the map would be the size of the actual world. So they have to use something called scale. So you're going to use a map scale right here. You see the blue term, which is an element of a map that shows how a unit of distance on the map, such as an inch, relates to actual distance on the surface of the earth. I want you to go ahead and read section three and then come back once you've read it. Okay, so you're now gonna answer questions talk using map scale. So I'm gonna click on these two maps and the map scale is this thing at the bottom right here that shows you it compares the distance on Earth to the distance on a map. So like for here you see, if I'm looking at the distance between Alexandria and Camp Springs, I would take a piece of paper or an index card and I would draw my tra or trace the lines on to the index card and then I would use the index card to hold up, okay, is it zero to five? Is it five miles? Or is it from Alexandria to Camp Springs? It, can you hold up the zero to 10? Is it 10 miles? So it's really important that you don't just guess. You really need to get out a piece of paper and trace where the zero line is, where the five line is, where the 10 line is, so that you can do an accurate measurement. You'll notice over here that the scale shows zero to 10 miles, but over on the one on the right, it shows zero to half a mile because this map here is much more zoomed in than this map over here. This is a zoomed in map of Washington, D.C., whereas this is an overview map of Washington, D.C. and the surrounding areas. So the scales are not the same. So what you're going to do below is you're going to have to actually draw lines. So find the distance between Washington, D.C. and New Carrollton, and then draw a line between the two places and write the distance on the line. So you'll use this, this line tool right here. You click on the shapes and you choose lines and arrows, and then you can pick whatever line you want to use. And so remember, they're asking you find the distance between Washington, D.C. and New Carrollton. So Washington, D.C. is here. Click, drag. Why is this not working? Oh, I'm sorry. It's dropping a line, and you actually, you actually have to move the line and twist it using this top box. So there's that. Drag it out make it longer and that's to New Carrollton. You click away and then it will allow you to create a text box and you write the distance on the line. So if there's a text box and then however far it is and again you have to use the scale so get out your index card, draw your 0 to 10 mile scale and measure Washington DC to New Carrollton and then you write it and I'm gonna make something up. It's obviously not a hundred miles but I will say 100 miles. Click away drag that and twist it and there you go. So you have a distance on the scale. So you will go through all these questions and you'll be done with section five. So the last thing in the video that I'm going to go over is the hemispheres and the continents and hopefully this is just a review for you but you know that the equator divides the world into the northern and the southern hemisphere and the prime meridian divides the world into the western and the eastern hemisphere. Um, these are your continents, North America, South America, Europe, Africa, Asia, Australia, and Antarctica. And you also have your oceans labeled here. So Pacific, Atlantic, Indian, and Arctic up north. So what you're going to do now is look over the questions at the bottom, label the largest continent, label the smallest. Um, all of these should be very simple and should not take you long at all. Again, click the text box, type it and then move it over to where it belongs. And that's it for now. Look for your email later for the map making assignment to come, and I will see you later.